Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hello YouTube, my name's Ben, I'm Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango and through this series of videos I'm going to show you how to build one of these. This is the All-Star Node designed by G7RPG Peter and I'm really excited to present to you a step-by-step -step idiot's guide how you put one of these together. Now let me just explain, I'm not an expert in any of this, I am the idiot who's managed to work it all out. There's nothing new in this video, so if you've read up other, on other websites and seen other videos and other blogs, I'm not presenting anything new. But what I am trying to do is bring together the wisdom of far better experts than me and put it all together in one place to provide all of the information for the build and programming and use of one of these nodes. When I built mine, I struggled along the way to get all of the information that I needed but I found three websites really, really helpful. Firstly, Scott Nimmo of allstarsetup.com was a tremendous help. He's got loads of pictures and information on there, particularly about how to build the actual node. Peter, who is G7RPG, well, this is his design, so you need to check out his website. And his YouTube channel has loads of helpful videos about how to do things like um, amend the little sound cards and things like that. And... David KB4FXC, the good man behind the hamvoip.org, has been a tremendous help. And really what I've done is gathered their three bits of information together, as well as a few of the YouTube videos I've seen along the way, melted them all down and reassembled it to make one of these. And I very much hope that this video will help you along your way. They're the experts, not me. Check out their videos as well. They are well worth a watch. But this is for the idiots, the fellow idiots out there to build the step-by-step -step guide. If you've never done anything like this before, I hope this will prove tremendously helpful to you. Enjoy the project. I enjoyed doing mine and I enjoy using it as well. So I hope that this is really good fun for you. Also, if you want to win an all-star node or win all of the bits that you need to make one, do check out my competition at the end of this video. Now, before we get to the actual bits and pieces that you'll need to buy for this project, let me just take you through the basic tools that you'll need. Firstly, you'll need a normal toolkit with some screwdrivers, including the Torx screwdrivers. They're the ones with the little stars on. You'll need that to take the radio apart and a drill and some drill bits and all the normal stuff that you'd find in a basic toolkit. Secondly, you'll need some sort of a multimeter that can measure the basics of electronics, volts, amps and ohms. And uh, a, a very cheap multimeter will do it. It doesn't need to be a high-end spec one, well, maybe 20 quid, something like that will do you well. But every ham radio shack should have one of these. Next up, you need some fine solder with a high level of flux in it. For some of the very fine soldering, huge thick solder won't serve you well at all. So fine solder, high in flux. Also, this stuff is essential for amending the CM108. This is liquid flux. Get a little pot of this. You will not believe what a difference it makes to soldering. You're going to need an Ethernet cable for your Raspberry Pi. And uh, any Ethernet cable will do. It doesn't really matter the length as long as you can get it from wherever your Raspberry Pi is into your router. In the end, it'll work on Wi-Fi, but initially you will need an Ethernet cable. Obviously, you're going to need a router with broadband access. It would be really helpful if you had a router with a spare Ethernet socket in it so that you can set up your Raspberry Pi. And afterwards, you're going to be relying heavily on its Wi-Fi connection. Next up, you need a soldering iron. I don't have a very high quality soldering iron, but just something that gets hot enough to melt solder. But what you do need is some very good soldering iron tips. I would really recommend getting the finest ones you can buy. These are 900 MT tips, and I recommend these. They're very, very fine, just less than a millimetre at the end, which you're going to need for amending your CM108 sound card. And lastly, insulation tape. I mean, you can just use sellotape out of the drawer, but this stuff works a treat and it looks really pretty when each of the insulation tapes match the wires that you're taping. So these are the things that you'll need to buy for this project. I got all of these from eBay. I found that to be probably the cheapest place. The other place to look is AliExpress, although the shipping takes a little bit longer from there. 
Firstly, you need to buy one of these, a Raspberry Pi. Now, there's two ways of buying these. You can either buy them with a load of accessories that actually works out at a relatively competitive price. The issue with that is that you don't need any of the other accessories. So if you're not going to use them, I would recommend just buying the Pi in the box. This should cost you no more than £25. And I personally like using the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. I find that the easiest to work with, most straightforward, and also a good cheap price, £25. Secondly, you need one of these to stick in it. This is an SD card. You need a micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi 3. And it's helpful when you buy one to pick up one of these as well. This just converts the SD card that is in micro SD format into the full size SD card to slot into your computer so that you can print the image of Hamvoip from the computer which takes this size onto the Raspberry Pi which takes this size. Personally, I use 32 gigabyte cards. I find that's uh, more than enough space and it costs you about four quid for one of these sent from somewhere like China or Taiwan. Uh, it'd be very, very cheap from there. Um, and uh, it's worth getting a branded one. SanDisk are a good company. The very, very cheap ones often get corrupted. So don't go for the ones that are cheap as chips, but about four or five pounds, something like that for one of these. Next up, you need some of these. They're beautifully coloured wires, but more importantly, they've got on one end the GPIO pins and sockets on them so that you can plug these straight into your Raspberry Pi board. You'll need five of these. Shouldn't cost you more than about 30p, particularly if you're buying them in bulk. Next up, you need some sort of power supply. I just bought some uh, 12 volt power supplies from eBay. They'll cost you about £4.50 for a relatively good quality stable power supply. It doesn't need to have many amps going through it. Obviously, this is all very low uh, power equipment but it does matter what connector you have on the end of it. I would suggest getting one that's 2.1 millimetres by 5.5 millimetres. That's 5.5 millimetres across the diameter of the, the socket itself. And then the hole in the middle, the pin, is 2.1 millimetres. So uh, grab yourself one of those. Next up, you'll obviously need the corresponding socket. These just mount on the surface of your project box and they have a longer and a shorter pin on the back so you can easily tell which one is positive and which one is negative. I like to have a toggle switch mounted on the back of my little all-star node so you can turn the whole thing on or off. Uh, without having to pull the wire out. It's a helpful kill switch as well, just in case you think there's something not quite right and you need to quickly and easily just turn the power off. These will both cost you about 70p, something like that. Not a lot of money, but they are really useful to have. Next up is the buck converter. Now, these little things are amazing. They step the voltage down from anywhere between 5 and about 50 volts down to somewhere between 1 and 12 volts, depending on the power you put in. Obviously, it can't step up. It is a step-down converter. But uh, if 12 volts comes in from the power supply, then you can step it down to 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi and 4.3 volts for the Baofeng 888, which we'll come on to in just a moment. These are relatively cheap to buy. This one cost me £1.50. Now, you might be asking, well, how on earth does that book converter manage to step down to two different voltages? Well, it doesn't. It steps it down to five volts. And then I use uh, a couple of these diodes. These are 1N5408s. Uh, they might cost you about 15p, something like that. But putting these in series, you can then step the voltage down by about 0.6 each time. So one or two of these should do. But we'll get onto that when we get there. But uh, not, a, not a lot of expense, but useful to have. The other thing you could do is buy two buck converters and set one for the Raspberry Pi and the other for the radio. But uh, personally, I just use the diodes. On the front of my all-star node, I like to have one of these push switches to safely shut the computer down when you finish using it. It's 16 millimetres across, so it's a big button for your finger to touch. And these cost about a pound. Next up, you need the radio. And for this, we're using the BF. 888S from Baofeng. These are not high quality radios, but they do the trick for the job that is needed here. Just to note, don't buy the European version, the PRM446 version. It's not the same radio. Although it might look similar, it doesn't have the um, removable antenna, which we're going to need for this particular build. 
But in this box, there are a load of other accessories that we just don't need. So quite often I just put the accessories on eBay and someone else um, snaps them up. These will cost you about eight pounds, but you might get a couple of quid back on the battery and the other bits that you don't need on eBay later. So six to eight pounds, something like that net. So once you've taken the antenna out of the Baofeng, you need one of these little pigtails. This is an SMA male to SMA pigtail. The ideal length is 10 centimetres, but they're very hard to find. Sometimes you end up having to get 15 centimetres, which will work, but they're just not quite as good. These cost you about £1.20, something like that. Just a point though, I made this mistake. Sometimes you see SMA and next to it you see RP. I had no idea what that meant, but they look very similar, so I bought them. The RP stands for reverse polarity. You do not want reverse polarity. Don't get the RP ones. You need SMA male to SMA female. If it says RP, don't touch it with a barge pole. Secondly, you need one of these. This is just a little 90 degree connector that goes from SMA female to SMA male. So if you Google 90 degree SMA female, SMA male, you'll pick one of these up. I think this was about two pounds, which I think I've probably been overcharged for, but one pound, two pounds, something like that. That's what you need. Next up is the sound card. And for this, we're using the CM108 sound card. You can get these from China for about two pounds. But just as a side note, it'll take weeks to get here. If you're impatient, you could visit my eBay shop where I've bought them in bulk and sell them for £7. That's a total rip-off, but I make a couple of quid and I enjoy selling them. But these cost £2 from China or about 7 quid from somewhere in the UK. You might wait four or five weeks from China. I'll send them to you next day. On the sound card, you need one of these tiny little transistors. These transistors are the 2M3904 transistors. They'll cost you about 30p for one of these. When we come to do the CM108 conversion, there's some very fine soldering to do, and it really helps to have some very fine wire. I would recommend this stuff. It is silicone coated, which means it is super flexible, and it is 30 gauge, which means it is very, very fine. Um, two meters of this will cost you about a pound. You will also need some other wires. You can just pick some out of the uh, shed or other wires. You've got some people open up network cables and just grab the wires out of there. But either way, you might want to just invest in a few fancy colored cables for a couple of quid off eBay. Next up, resistors. You need seven resistors for this project. You need four 10K resistors, two 1K resistors, and one 4K7. Um, you might be better just buying in bulk, just buy a big batch of 600 resistors for a fiver off eBay, or if you buy the individual ones, maybe 10p for seven resistors, something like that. Um, but it's always good to have some in stock. Next up, you need LEDs. I use three different colored LEDs, although you don't have to, you can use whatever colors you want, but I've got red, green, and blue for my project, and these will cost you about 20p. And then finally, you need some sort of a project box, I buy these from eBay for £7. They are 130mm by 170mm and 55mm deep. And uh, again, they come from China, so they take a few weeks to get here, but they're just the perfect size to mount everything in. So altogether, that's cost just £61 for all of the bits. Now let's get on with the build. The first set of the build is going to be to sort out the power. Because until we've sorted out the power, we can't do a lot else. We can't test anything. We can't program the Raspberry Pi. So we'll start with the power in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video in the Idiot's Guide to Building an All-Star Node. I hope it's been really helpful for you. Any questions, do add them in the comments below. If you like this video, click the like button. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Lastly, if you want, you can win yourself an all-star node, either a ready-built one or all of the bits that you need to build an all-star node. At the end of this video, take a look at the competition and enter it if you want to win yourself either all of the bits or the ready-built node. I'm Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, bravo Mike Tango, off and clear, 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero, bravo Mike Tango, returning.